Begin with Coach Bowden's opening remarks, and then we will take questions for both Coach Bowden and for the student athletes. Coach? Uh, well, I want to thank all of you for coming to the uh, media day and uh, uh, supporting our, our conference and uh, uh, so many great things happening in our conference, the expansion and the, the quality of the coaches, the quality of the players, and the quality of the competition. It's just great that we're able to uh, uh, take advantage of that so much because of the great job that y'all do, and we appreciate that very much. Uh, uh, and we, do, we definitely do at uh, University of Louisiana Monroe. Two players I have with me, Boogie Knight, Jeremiah Knight, I should say, uh, is our wide receiver. Boogie Knight, you probably wonder why they call him Boogie Knight. It's not about him. It's about how old his parents are. So if you know, if you understand, uh, because I know it's Jeremiah Knight. He's our wide receiver, punt, kick returner on our team. Uh, and Zach Woodard is our linebacker on our defense and our leading tackler. Um, these are two of our outstanding leaders uh, and players on our football team and both graduate students. And uh, Zach will finish up this semester and uh, uh, coming up and uh, Boogie will finish up uh, in the spring his master's degree uh, at, at uh, ULM. And, uh, and, and let me just say, I'm excited to be at ULM. These are exciting times at ULM. Many of you probably aren't on campus or don't go up to Monroe. You catch us on a game somewhere. But this is an exciting time to be at ULM. Football is just a part of what's going on now. New facilities, uh, new commitment, uh, an excited community, excited uh, 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 Faculty, staff, uh, campus, uh, and football has been fortunate enough to be a part of that. The great thing about ULM football right now is that as the school sees its future success and they see the future excitement in that community, they see football as being a huge part of that. That it goes hand in hand, it goes together. And that's what you need to build a football program. And so I'm excited. I think of ULM a little bit uh, as being maybe one of the new kids on the block in the sense that I believe we'll be in competition for the conference championship this year. I didn't say I would win the conference championship. I think we can compete for it. We can compete in this conference. And I have, our, I have players that have full confidence that they have the ability to line up and play with anybody in this conference. I don't say we'll be favored in every game. I can't tell you what the record's going to be, but I do know after last season that we're on our way to being a competitive part of this conference, and I'm excited about the opportunities that we have uh, in the Western Division of this conference uh, uh, and the challenges that, that presents and the opportunities that presents with our football team. So we are excited. Our expectations are higher. I think if I talk to every one of our players as I have this summer, we expect to have a winning season. We expect to go to a bowl. We expect to. You don't always get what you want. You don't always get what you need, but you almost always get what you expect. So I've told them, let's start expecting that to happen. And it, does, it has only happened once in 28 years. But we expect that to happen. We've got we to win close ball games. We've got to get better. And we've got to perform. And, uh, um, and that's what always you have to do. So everything is a we'll see uh, and we'll see. But I tell you, I know for a fact our players have worked hard and they expect to take our program to the next level, at least the next level for ULM right now. Um, and with that, I'll open up questions. Before we take questions from Coach and our student athletes, uh, because uh, new teams, new faces uh, in the room, uh, John Lewandowski, are you here? If you are, raise your hand. I don't know if, yeah, he's here. Uh, Sports Information Director at ULM. He is the man to go to for all information about the Warhawks. Right now, we'll take questions for Coach Bowden and the student athletes. For those of you that are in the room, if you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for a microphone to come to you. And if you would also, please stand so we can catch you on camera. If you would, state your name and your media affiliation before you ask your question. And for those of you joining us on Zoom, please type your questions into the chat and I'll read those aloud. So questions in the room for Coach. Oh, sorry. Dusty Tibbet of a Warhawk Report. Coach, a brutal first four weeks of the season. How big are those games that you have to make it through in order to be able to compete in the Sun Belt down the stretch? Well, we, we've, we've got a – they're our first four games. They are what they are, and they bring with us a great opportunity from our standpoint of uh, playing in two of the great venues in college football. I have uh, coached – this will be my ninth year at the Group of Five level. 
Uh, and um, I know it's always a great opportunity to go and play where many players dreamed one day in their earlier years of lining up and playing football. And so we like the opportunity uh, to play games like that. It's obviously a very, very tough road to hoe. I have learned in my seven years in the MAC Conference where we opened up with Oklahoma, Michigan, Penn State, Tennessee. We had the big boys every year. Uh, we beat Northwestern in the year they played for the Big Ten Championship up there. We know one thing that the outcome of that game and we do want to go in with a, with our, with a belief that, that things can happen in any ball game, that that will not dictate the success of our season. I mentioned earlier that we played Oklahoma when I was at Akron. We got beat 55 to 3. We had the best year in school history, won the first game ever uh, that same year. We will go in those games and play the best we can, and if we can pull something off, we will. But when you talk about the off season, I'm as concerned, if not much more, with Nickel State, who can beat us in any day. They're that good. They can beat any team in our conference on a given day. That's an outstanding team uh, in 1AA, as well as Army down the road, on the road. So you're right, it's a very difficult schedule. But if you're going to coach at the uh, group of five level, autonomous level of football, um, that you better know how to handle your off, your non schedule. In the SEC, you know your conference is your toughest part of your schedule. Uh, quite often in the Sun Belt, the toughest part of your schedule is your non-conference schedule. And the, the key is to manage it. Manage the successes and manage the failures and don't let it affect the outcome of your football team. Where it will really hurt you is you get beat up. You know we make about $4 million in those two games that we play, uh, and that's, val that's, that's a lot of money. Uh, and I hope we don't play two super-duper power fives every year in the future, and I don't think we will. Uh, but in the meantime, we got to make sure we uh, just keep our fingers crossed, play as hard as we can, and hope we don't get, get uh, people injured that can hurt us down the road in the season. Uh, and then, of course, like I, like I said before, uh, uh, those, those, see, those games will have nothing to do with how we ha impact us if we don't get injuries. And I, as a head coach, can control the morale of our football team, which I think I can. I've done this a long, 27 years as a head football coach. I think I can handle the tough losses and the, or the big wins that kind of make you think you're better than you are maybe at times, uh, so that I can handle the morale and we can just we, we can say a prayer for that we don't get banged up in some of those games and go on and be ready to play in our conference. Unlike normally, or at least last year, we don't face the defending champion in the last game. We face them in the first conference game. Uh, we'll, we'll know where we stand pretty quick in this conference by the fourth game of the season. Coach, uh, Emmanuel Peppa's Sunbelt Conference. Just wanted to get you to talk about, uh, you mentioned, uh, well, first of all, last year it was a tough stretch of opponents uh, down the stretch for you guys, a couple of close calls against some very good teams. But still, you, you mentioned about the progress that was made. As you look to take those next steps, what are some of the things that you guys have focused on in this offseason? Well, I mean, we just, each person has to get better at what they do. I mean, all you can do if we take the players that are here at this table, they have worked so hard to get better at their game. They're going to bring a better, a better version of themselves. And that's what we must do as a football team is take another year to be another year better. And, and the, the biggest difference I see, we came out of last spring with about 20 something, uh, portal transfers and we really didn't know who was starting. Well, most of the guys weren't even starting that were there that were starting. Now, most of the guys that have gone through spring are starters. They're the guys that started last year. Not only do we know how good they are in this conference, they know what we're going to do offensively and defensively. Now, we've got some guys that are transferring in a few, a few, it's much smaller number, and we hope they will add to our team, but they, we're not dependent upon them to make our team, to make, a, make or break our team, I should say. And so I think that's one difference is one is that we've got to, uh, uh, we've got a team that's, that's matured, and that's one of the things they've got to do. We've got to be a better, better version of ourselves, uh, which, just we most people know in a year later you better be better at what you do year one to year two ought to be a significant difference in the quality of your football team in this business no matter where you're coaching as you step into a program that's imp important to do but also you're going to have a, if you have a toss-up game 11 12 times a year where it's a it, it, your team is equal to their team talent wise you're not going to win all those games somewhere on the line we got to line up and have better football players on the field so that we win by playing good, solid football. They play their best. We play their be our best. We're going to win. You got to have some of those. Right now, we've got to the point where we play our best and they play their best. It's toss up. 
And as last season occurred, we didn't play any worse in the last couple of games, especially when we talk about the games we lost against Texas State and the game we lost against Arkansas State. We didn't play worse. They just made one more play than we did. We didn't make that last play to beat uh, uh, Troy or that last play, the field goal to kick and beat Liberty. They did. And all of a sudden, you play all those one-point games of those tight ball games, and it's going to all balance out. We've got to become better as a football team so that we don't walk in there and feel like we've got to play over our head to succeed. And so that's what you don't, because I'm not a good enough coach. There are too many good coaches in this conference uh, as I've faced in the past, in my lifetime. There are, there are coaches in this conference, and they're really good coaches. I, I, I look around and see which one's going to be the next Spurrier that I coach, or which one's going to be the next Joe Paterno, which one's going to be some of the great coaches I coached against uh, over the years. Uh, there's, they're sitting out here in this conference and I'm not going to out coach them. So we have got to get better at our guys that are here. We've got to bring in more people that can play, uh, uh, and help us become a better football team to the point where we're not having to go out there and play above our heads to win a football game. Uh, and I think that's just, that's part of building your program. And I've been fortunate over the last six programs. This is my sixth head coaching job is that if we'll do the little things, we'll, we'll work hard, we'll, we'll bring in good young men like this who can play solid football, get a couple of ringers if you could, get a couple of really, really, you get a couple that are a different level, and just coach up and have confidence and be fundamentally sound, you're going to win. It may come in the first year as it did at Auburn, it may come in the uh, fourth year as it did at Akron. But it's going to happen if you do the right things. And I feel like that's where we are here. Next year, we've got to be better as team, as the team that we brought back, uh, and as the team that we've added to our additions. We also, I might add, we didn't, we don't talk about, it. we're very fortunate, first time in my career, I believe, to have a returning kicker coming back, returning punter coming back, returning long snapper, returning holder, and returning punt and kick returner coming back. That's kind of critical in a one-point game or a tight ball game, and I think that's going to be important to us. Those are the little things you got to try to build as you try to get yourself going from that. You know, in the, in the group of five, I've often said, uh, no matter what conference, the difference between five and seven and seven and five isn't a whole lot. It's one play or two plays because your non-conference is so hard. And so we're trying to make that transition. Um, yes, Terry, Ted Lewis from Times Speaking. You, you mentioned about coaching seven years in the MAC. How do you see the, there's the Sun Belt now going into a period of stability and identifiable footprint like the MAC has? And how, how beneficial is that for the, for the league? Well, I think the MAC, the MAC of course, what the, you know, you're kind of always favoring the team you're in or the area that you're from. And uh, in the South, college football is a lot, to me, it's a lot more important than it is to a lot of parts of the North where they play on Sundays. They get excited about Sundays a lot more than they do Saturdays. We still get pretty excited about Saturday football down here. The MAC does have a lot of tradition. And, and I, at, at Akron, I coached against Lafayette. I coached against Troy. I coached against Appalachian State. And won some, lost some. Uh, and even then, I thought it was a very competitive conference. I thought the conference was very competitive. I do feel the direction of our program. We're moving ahead now. We're making decisions. We're making additions. We're becoming a bigger, stronger conference. And I think that will play out in the next years. I know our bowl record at, uh, in the Sun Belt is one of the, one of the best. I know the best at the autonomous level. Our bowl record, it may be all, all levels. I don't know what that stat is, but I know it's at our level. So I, I think uh, the Sun Belt is doing the things necessary building the strength of our conference, building the regional strength of our conference and the national recognition of our conference, I think we are doing the things that would put us there. I do not think we were any different. I mean, basically, I've coached in the MAC and I've been coached in the Sun Belt or against Sun Belt most of my life, that uh, there has been a lot of difference in which team has the two or three best teams every year. It's been fairly close. There's some good programs up there, you know, Toledo and, and uh, year in and year out, some other programs that have been very, very good. Year in a year out. Raymond Parts with the game, 1037 Lafayette, 1041 Lake Charles. This is for coach and for the players. You guys obviously made strides last season. We're far more competitive. We're involved in some close games and you know, won a handful of games. What do you guys need to do to take that next step and 
be a winning team this season and get to a bowl? Yeah, I think the biggest thing this year, as Coach mentioned, and it's just about finishing. I mean, I think we're five to seven plays away from being a seven and five, eight and four team. It comes down to making those big plays in the big situations. I mean, you think about it, we make a couple fourth and ones at LSU and that game is a, it could be a win in our, and the books for us are, we're at Arkansas State and we're a field goal away or Texas State, we're a point away until the 30 seconds left in the game and it just comes down to finishing plays in the big situations and big time moments. We gotta just come up and I think the amount of work we put in this off season is gonna show this year and now it's getting to that point where we got players and we got confidence that we know we can make those plays when it comes down to it. Basically, just picking back off what he said, just last year was trying to get just a stride of winning under our belt, and then we feel like after being Liberty, okay, yeah, we can do this. We never believe him, but then just coming, falling short in the back half of it, just really showed us that, like, all right, well, hey, we're here, but now we just got to get over that, str- over that hump right there. We're just finishing the plays, and like he said, seven, eight plays, we feel like, hey, we're going bowling. So really, the stride this year is just, hey, anything other than bowling is a fail. I think if I might add, in, in the bigger picture, uh, ULM as a program, first of all, as a staff, I'm very excited. Very difficult when you lose six coaches. How are you going to keep moving forward? But I'm very fortunate in that I've had a bunch of coaches working for me, my dad, my brothers. We've got relationships in this profession where we think we can get pretty co- good coaches to join with us, and we feel like we made – additions to our coaching staff that are as good as we had or better, not so much better in their energy and uh, potential as the coaches, but in their their background and their experience. I'm talking uh, Matt, Matt Kubik on offense, who was four years at ULM as a coordinator uh, and had outstanding offenses in this conference. Played at uh, La Tech, is from the area, understands recruiting this area. We've got uh, uh, Vic Koning, our defensive coordinator, was successful twice in our conference at Troy with the top or second best defense in the conference. He understands what it takes to be successful in this conference. I might add John Carr, who's coaching our wide receivers uh, and is our recruiting coordinator, played at La Tech, 14 years a coach in Wachita Parish. He understands the conference and he understands uh, the recruiting area. And by that, we hope we can offer development of our team you know you you build a championship team or a winning team right Raven like you asked by recruitment and development we've got to we've got to do a great job of recruiting the best players in this area as well as figure out the portal thing that's going on because that's an issue that we all have to but we've also got to be a commitment as a university which we haven't been in all ways of developing our athletes that's with coaches that can coach and teach and also a school that's committed to these players. We spent over $250,000 this year just in a player lounge. It's called PTL for, player, for players only. I mean, FPO, for players only. How can I remember to pronounce? For players, FPO, for players only is our lounge for the players where they can go play pool, watch TV, or have a study carol, or get a haircut, or have, a, have a, a nutrition kitchen where they can have smoothies and shakes, and nobody can go in but them. And it's first class. There won't be anybody in the country in, at, at our level that has anything better. But I think we've got to make a commitment for developing our player. That develops their, their, their relationship, their, their, their teamwork, their togetherness, being together and, and bonding together, I think, and all those things. So you, to make a, give a long answer to a short question, we've got to have a commitment by our coaching staff to be the kind of coaches that can develop, we have to have a commitment by our school, which I feel we have in all areas of our school, to build the kind of program that players like this can develop and become the best players they can become. Charlie Krause, Coach and Crew Show. This is for the guys and coach, if you want to expand afterwards, feel welcome to. I see Coach Bowden as someone who knows how to engage and motivate and just really suck you in and have you buy in and believe from day one go forward and then make you want to run through a wall. What's your perspectives of Coach Bowden and how has he possibly done that for y'all? And then if you'd like to say how the generation has changed and how you still can relate to this year's generation, Coach, thank you. 
I mean, I, you could ask any player on the team. You could ask any staff member on the team. Coach Bowden is someone who he puts his all into this program, and the players see that, and he loves his players, and he's a very personal person and a player's coach. And I think we would all run through a wall for him, and you got to have that type of connection with your coach and with your staff because at the end of the day, like, you play better, and you're going to give everything for someone that you trust and you love and that you want to play for. And I think that's the biggest thing with this team. They see what he does for us, and I think that's huge when it comes down to, like, when we're getting ready to strap up for Texas or any of these games. Like, we want to play for the team and for each other, but we also want to play for Coach Bowden. See, just like, just from my perspective, just like seeing coming to ULM and having a coach like Coach Bell really helped out because he's a true player's coach. I know a lot of people be like, yeah, he's a player coach, but no, he's a true player coach. Everything that he does for us is like, it's for ULM, it's trying to stride and get us better, and it just really makes you just want to come out and play for him and come to practice and just win games for him. And I appreciate what they, they've said. I've trained them well, obviously. No, but, you know, I, 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 I used to make fun because my dad got for so many years, and many of y'all have been able to cover my father, and he passed uh, this past August last year. Uh, he was the grandfatherly guy. For, all, for many of us, he was not the fatherly type of coach. He was the grandfatherly coach as we remember him. I remember him a lot earlier. And I kind of, that's kind of what I'm becoming, more of almost the grandfatherly coach, but I think... My, my players do not know how much I love them, and if I'm not at a practice, I'm raising money to get them something so they can have something more at practice. One of the biggest things we're doing at ULM, because I want it to exist beyond uh, my time there. My time is not going to be forever. I'm 66 years old, and I'm going to coach until they don't want me to coach anymore. Uh, but the first thing I want my players to do is join the Letterman Club and join the Alumni Association and make ULM something that they're a part of the rest of their life. We've, org we've, we've founded a, and begun a program that we call the Warhawk Way at ULM in which we try nothing but to work on our players and then give them an opportunity to develop off the field. And the Warhawk Way is a way of saying there's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. We want to do it the Warhawk Way, the right way, the way we treat people, the way we act, that we're service players, that we're service people, uh, and that we leave ULM being an, a different type of individual. You know, we first-class men, world-class leaders is what I tell our players I want us to develop. And the five tenets that I want them to have is, is to be improved athletically, academically, professionally, in service, and spiritually. And those five tenets that I want as much for their growth in those areas as I do in, in, in their football. Because those are the ones that I believe that will take them away from ULM and, and help make them great players, uh, great people, uh, and ULM representatives. This is for uh, Boogie and uh, for, for Zach. Obviously, you, you guys are big parts of uh, what Coach had mentioned earlier about a, a lot of guys that are returning and uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of knowns now going into this season. Just talk about the cohesion that you guys see that really exists overall and how you could take that forward into this year. Yeah, I think it's really important. I mean, we got a bunch of guys that are coming back for, uh, from last year, and I think that's huge when it comes to, like, the chemistry of the team. And, like, we set the standard, and everybody knows, all the leaders know, all the freshmen know, as soon as they step foot on campus, what the standard is and what this team's about. And it's, we've changed, like, the, the image of ULM, and we're not trying to be like the old ULM. We're trying to create something new, and I think – each day and every day we all come to work and we come with that same common goal and I think that's huge for this program and it's future success is just every time we step foot in the building and everybody knows what's on our mind and what we're planning to achieve and I think that's the difference between even last year and this year. I know as of last year just coming in it's one of those transfers it was like 20 of us so it's like you really didn't get cohesive until like mid-season to where you start figuring out, oh, he's going to do this and this to where now coming into season two, it's a lot, it's a lot better because I know what my D-line like to do. I know what my corners are like. I know, oh, he like to do this and that to where it's just more cohesiveness on a defensive end. Any other questions from the floor? Coach, Boogie, Zach, we appreciate you being here. Good luck to you this season. Thank you. We'll continue in this room about five minutes from now at 3 p.m. with the South Alabama Jaguars.